Hey folks, how you doing? It's your man Tim Black. I'm here. Thank you so much for tuning into a special edition of No Sellouts. I'm very, very happy to introduce to you a friend of mine who came on the show before, and now it's very timely. My friend, a, a humanitarian who's been working at that business for over four decades, none other than vice presidential nominee for the Green Party, my man, Ajamu Baraka. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure to to be back with you and your 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 uh, listeners and viewers and. And uh, I'm, this is one of my, my favorite shows. So I'm glad to be back. Man, we're glad to have you back, man. Before I get, before I ask you anything, Ajamu, how's Jill doing, man? I heard she had the, the flu or something. She was sick like me. Well, you know, it, it's, it's, it's rough out here, you know, and so they, they keep us running. And so she had a, a little bit of a, uh, you know, like a little flu. You know, but she, she's, she's coming back. Uh, we both in, in California, so I'm supposed to see her in a few hours this evening at a at a, an event. So she's back at it. Hopefully, uh, she'll get a day or two, and hopefully, I can get me a day. Uh, uh, I'm gonna get a day probably until like October the 30th, but I'm looking forward to that. Wow, wow. Well, you know, uh, I, I thought so. What I hope that she's fine. I know she is. I, I I'm just I'm b- battling some sickness myself, man. But I said I got to mm. get up. And, and get back in gear, man. I got a Jamu today. So, so here, <laughs> here it is, man. I'd like to start out, a Jamu, by talking about what you just did recently at the Dakota Access Pipeline. Could you explain to us a little bit what you saw and how did it go with those arrest warrants? Because you guys were being so, I don't know, uh, uh, I don't know what, the, what, what their reason with that was, but could you talk about well, that? You- yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, it was some, some weeks ago, and we went out there in solidarity with the, uh, that ongoing uh, struggle on the part of indigenous people to try to maintain the integrity of their, of their sacred, of their sacred uh, burial sites and their land uh, and to protect uh, uh, the water uh, for themselves and for the 17 million people downstream. Um, and uh, we ended up um, involving ourselves in some resistance activities that then resulted in uh, charges of criminal trespassing against uh, Jill Stein and myself and, uh, and vandalism because, uh, uh, you know, we, we made some comments uh, in solidarity um, and um, the authorities didn't like that. So uh, they issued uh, an arrest warrant first for Jill Stein and then the next day for myself. And so that is now something we have to, in fact, deal with. But, you know, Tim, we want to make sure the people are clear that, you know, while we had to deal with this, uh, we're more concerned about the fact that there are dozens of other people who have been arrested, uh, dozens who are still um, uh, incarcerated. Uh, the authorities have gotten really, really aggressive uh, out there. Uh, so, you know, this, this fight, you know, is really a, an ongoing fight that uh, we want to keep the attention on the indigenous folks. We, we're going to be all right, even though, you know, we, we don't take this lightly because, uh, you know, as, as your viewers prob- probably know, they also uh, charged Amy Goodman, uh, and she went out to, uh, to address the charges. Uh, they dropped, uh, or had to drop the criminal trespass charge, and then, but they tried to, and which were moving toward uh, trying to charge her with rioting which was even more serious charge. Uh, she had to end up staying there for the weekend and going back to court on Monday. And luckily they dropped that charge, but you know, that sort of reflects, you know, what we're dealing with out there. Absolutely. So that, that, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's that struggle. We, you know, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I know they temporarily had stopped some of the construction. Uh, has that, that order to stop, is that, is that gone now? They've, they've continued the construction of the pipeline. Yeah, that was only a, a public relations stunt. Um, the, 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 the process continues, and that's why the struggle continues. Uh, and that's why the authorities have gotten much more uh, aggressive. This is, uh, this is about big money, uh, and they are, um, are committed to protecting their investment and, and making sure this project goes forward. So, and they, the indigenous and their allies are just as committed. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to be... Uh, uh, I think the struggle is going to intense, intensify out there. Yeah, you know, it's it's good for people to know because I know a lot of folks are really getting to know Ajamu at this point. But this man has been working in human rights uh, uh, globally. It should be noted, uh, you know, for for all people for for four decades, over four decades. So him being involved in this issue is not is not a publicity stunt. It's not to garner favor with the public. This is what this man does. So um, very very interested in hearing. Um, 
just what you think the next steps can be to try to thwart this, Ajamu? Well, you know, they it's it's going to be um, they're going to, have to going to have to apply continuous pressure on the authorities uh, to try to get this stopped. It's going to be a very difficult one because, as we said a moment ago, uh, we talked about uh, uh, millions of dollars uh, of of in this project. But you know, as you said, this this is a uh, Lost him. Oh. <laughs> I'll wait for them to come back. Uh, very interesting. You know, uh, Jamu and company, they're in a hotel in California and they're using the best, the, uh, what they have access to in order to to reach us. And that's a, uh, a smart device. And he's back. I'm back. So there he is. He's back. Okay. And there you go. If you just flip that camera, you're good. Okay. Well, that phone, I should say. But yeah, yeah. Um, so, so what? I, what I wanted to mention, Tim, was that that you know this is this is sort of indicative of struggles taking place around around the country, and I want to um, uh, raise that point because I was just in in uh, Michigan uh, day before yesterday, and uh, went up through Flint. And what I try to do, Tim, I, I don't go into places normally when it's like all the cameras and folks are. You know, uh, and people sweep in and, and, and come in for photo ops and all of that. I try to, to you know, do the work where, uh, you know, we could be the most effective in helping to uh, amplify what's happening on the ground uh, when people most need it. And so, as you know, everybody was talking about Flint, you know, and uh, there was all kind of people going through. But, you know, most of those folks have kind of uh, moved on to the next struggle. Uh, so we went through Flint and had a chance to meet with uh, many of the key organizers there. And they report that the struggle continues, that here we have now two years later, and they still have to bring water in from the outside. People are afraid to take showers, um, you know, and they can't even get some basic demands done, like uh, asking the federal government uh, to declare uh, Flint a disaster area, which will allow them to then put money in Right. into the area to really address that issue. So, you know, you have Flint. And then I went from there and we met, went up to, uh, uh, to um, uh, what's the name of that city? Muskegon? Muskegon. Yeah, to meet with uh, Reverend uh, um, Pickney, who uh, is an activist from Benton Harbor. Uh, I, I, like I said, a reverend uh, who uh, was organizing the local black community in Benton Harbor to try to... Uh, protects the interests of the black community uh, when the uh, this major corporation, the Whirlpool Co Corporation, uh, working with uh, local city government, black folks, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you know, we're making some moves that are really detrimental uh, the community thought to uh, to the to the black community. He was a major uh, uh, organizer, uh, and they ended up uh, he ended up uh, being convicted. And being sent to uh, prison for 30 months to 10 and a half years. And guess what his, uh, his charges was? They said that he altered the dates on four or five uh, voter registration um, applications. And they used that to convict him of, of, of felonies and to send him in, send him to prison. So he's been in prison now for two and a half years. Uh, and so we went up uh, and had a chance to uh, meet with him uh, the other day. He, but his spirits are high. But, you know, I think people need to know about these kinds of courageous individuals because they don't always get the same level of, 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 of attention that they really deserve. Uh, and these are the kinds of, of political prisoners that we have here in the U.S. Uh, that we try to, uh, to raise up uh, so people can know what's really happening here in this country regarding human rights. Well, I'm glad you mentioned it because, like you said, I, I hadn't heard about this. And this would be something I would talk about on my show once given that information. I will look into it further, Jamu. But you bring up a good point when you bring up uh, – I guess what they're saying is that he – a voter fraud. And you know yeah. Donald Trump recently raised this issue at the last debate. I don't know if you uh, if you can yes. sit through much much of that. But uh, what's your take on the whole voter fraud angle and the election rigging? I think the voter fraud angle is one of those those um, uh, charges that the political right they have been raising for quite some time. Even though they can't point to any specific, concrete voter fraud uh, indictments, 
you know, but they have been using that to uh, to enact uh, uh, laws to basically suppress the vote, mm. targeting primarily uh, uh, minor, so-called minority communities and specifically African Americans. So, of course, we all know that they have the uh, the the laws on the books that uh, prevent uh, uh, felons who have served their time uh, from participating in various states. Uh, but now they have enacted these voter ID laws across the country, uh, making it very difficult or just one additional obstacle to participating in the electoral process. Uh, you know, ID laws that have an uh, impact on poor people, where people who have to drive 100 miles because they live in some rural part of the, of the state in order to get this official ID. That's, that's enough of a... Right, right. I agree with him. I agree with Ajamu there. Um, there is a difference between voter fraud, which is partially what Trump is talking about, but there's also uh, vote rigging, right, and election rigging, right? So voter, I, I think that pertains to the individual, what they do with an individual. And election rigging, that would be like campaigns. So, okay. um, are we back? Yeah, you're back. You're back. <laughs> Thank you for fighting through that for me, Ajamu, man. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, um, no, no problem. I'm sorry, I'm sorry about this technology issue. No problem. So, so the voter fraud. I try to separate that for my folks. We got voter fraud, then we got election like corruption, like rigging, like we saw evidence of in several cases during the primaries, Hillary Clinton campaign versus Bernie Sanders. What do you think about that that side of the angle? Well, that that's um, you know that's that's fraudulent in a sense, but. Uh, you know, what the Republicans are talking about is much more sort of uh, ominous because they, 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 they try to suggest that there's this widespread uh, voter fraud taking place organized by minority people. And the other thing that they are concerned about, and which is basically bogus, is this, uh, this, this cross-checking that they're doing mm -hmm. uh, where they will, you know, you, you, live, you might live in Texas and you get uh, a notification that says that someone with your same name uh, voted in Louisiana, uh, and they claimed that that was you. And since you know you 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 voted uh, uh, more than twice, one, more than once, they're gonna take you off the off the rolls in Texas. You know, you know. So they've been doing this across the country again, trying to suppress the the turnout. So this this is where the real voter fraud takes place. You know, uh, so you know Donald Trump using these this uh, language of voter fraud and rigged systems. You know, it's it's uh it's quite unfortunate because it's diverting attention from the real kind of fraudulent activity uh, that's taking place here in this country to undermine uh, democracy and undermine the democrat so-called democratic processes. That's interesting. You know, um, people were trying to you know they they reached out to me and they said, Tim, we need to really clear up some of the uh, misconceptions because Trump's his his reasons for voicing some issues, though they resonate with Bernie Sanders supporters. What he's talking about is a little, is to, like like John was stated, is totally different than what our concerns were. Ours was like inner campaign, um, yes. inner party like issues, like what we've seen. Have you had an opportunity to check any of the WikiLeaks documents, or uh, or have you read about some of those WikiLeaks documents, Ajamu? I read about some of them. You know, on this campaign trail, you don't get a chance to do a whole lot of of reading, but okay. I do know that what they have have um, a surface. It's what many of us always thought, and that is that in many ways that process in the Democratic Party was already rigged, that, um, you know, they had determined that they were going to undermine the Sanders campaign, uh, and that's what they, they did systematically. So, yeah, we saw that. We saw the fact that Hillary Clinton has um, uh, one uh, set of, of, of conversations for the insider folks, the, uh, the, the super rich. And another one for uh, for the folks out there in uh, in the hinterlands. She's trying to convince to support her. You know, again, just confirming what many of us always said that you know we're dealing with someone that has no uh, core beliefs that's going to do and say whatever she needs to do in order to uh, to acquire power. So I, I've read about those those things. Right, right. And uh, also, I don't know if you caught this, but there were a lot of emails that showed a connection between the Clinton campaign and the media, right? Oh, so yes. Yes. they're like, I mean, this is horrible stuff. Now, I'm going to ask you, Ajamu, 
Has a media entity ever asked you if it was okay? If they ever, did they ever run past you an article that they've written and run it past you and say, hey, can we print this? Is this good with you? <laughs> we haven't had that luxury yet, you know. You know, I guess you only get that when you uh, are, are, are serving the one percent. But yeah, no, no. I read that part too. That basically, it's this cozy relationship between the powerful and the corporate media, which is really unfortunate, and really, uh, again, uh, demonstrates why it's so important to have independent media voices, folks like yourself, you know, who can uh, you know talk truth to power, who can bring on to your shows the people who they would, 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 would whether or not have any kind of exposure. I mean, that is the only way that we're able to ensure that uh, alternative information gets to the people and people can really weigh stuff and make their own decisions. But no, we haven't had that kind of luxury. And it's really, you know, and, and it's almost like some of the things Donald Trump is saying in terms of the, the cozy relationship between the Clinton campaign and the media is in fact true. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing with Trump. He said he gives you one kernel of truth and then it's like covered in like a mound of <laughs> dishonesty or I don't know. But uh, he does give you some truth. Did you get a chance to catch that piece you guys were featured? And I should say Jill Stein was featured in for my friend uh, John Oliver, where, she, where he spoke so highly of you guys. And he really pigeonholed you guys as like kooky. I don't know if you saw that. HBO. Oh man, I lost him. I was getting cute too. I was I was zinging. I was zinging Oliver. He's coming back. Okay. All yeah, right. he's back now. John Oliver recently, I gave him the business a little in one of my shows where he he dissed the Green Party and he dissed uh I would say when he dissed Stein, he he's dissing Baraka too. I don't know if you caught that where he uh he, he you I know, didn't he get the whole Yeah, he brought I heard some, about it. I didn't Go ahead, Ajamu. Yeah, no, I I heard about it. I didn't I didn't get a chance to see it yet, but I want to check it out. But I heard that uh, in his own sort of a uh, sort of smug and, and superior way. Flip that uh, camera, he... flip that camera, Jamal. Okay, there you go. We there he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That in his own smug go. and superior way, he, uh, he 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 put a, a serious he put out a serious argument as to why people should not be interested in voting their 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 beliefs. Their, their values, their principles, uh, and instead just uh, get behind, uh, in essence, he was saying, get behind, you know, uh, Clinton, because why he tries to suggest everybody has, you know, baggage or whatever, you know, of course, the people who are his, his listeners, his viewers, are probably, for the most part, going to be Clinton supporters. Absolutely. And, and that's why I question those guys. I mean, I look at it, you know, when they have, whenever they're making – Whenever they're hitting just one side of the coin and continually hit Trump, I'm like, why are they doing that? You're supposed to be a comedian. Comedians make fun of everyone. So I always look at him kind of suspect that way. I wanted to ask you about this because this is one of the pushbacks I get when I'm, I'm saying, hey, vote green, guys. They say, Tim, what about the Nader effect? Ajamu, what about the Nader effect? That's so, that, that is that is such a the, the, the biggest myth out there, and so the Nader effect is this so-called spoiler. How do you have spoilers in democracy? You know, and and why would people allow themselves to be herded back onto the Democrat plantation based on this this existential threat uh, coming from the Republicans? Again, if they were so concerned about Donald Trump and and the threat he posed to the nation, talking about the Democrats they would have given the nomination to Bernie Sanders. These folks are not serious. They don't care about this country, you know? And so you, you talk about Nader. If Gore would have had the, ran the kind of campaign he could have run and even won his own uh, uh, state, then Florida would have been insignificant, you know? So people who voted their conscience, voted their principles, they should not be bullied or condemned for doing that. This is absolutely anti-democratic and irrational and dangerous. Yeah, the, the idea that we gave, you know, Nader gave people more options, therefore he is evil, is like, is their argument, you know, and that now that the Green Party is in it, they give more options, that's a bad thing because now it takes away from the Democrats. And my thing is, if you don't have the ability to attract voters based on your policies, that's on you. You, know? exactly. you have to earn your vote. You can't just, I mean, this is, this is you know, this is what, what we, the part of the critique that many of us have with the Democratic Party, that basically people 
give their votes to the Democratic Party, get nothing back in return. And they take they take uh, those voters uh, for granted. You know? Absolutely. We I don't know. Option. I want to get... Yeah, yeah, we need options. Options are good. And I'm pushing people. They've got this thing out now. And, and, and folks are, Tim, you need to hear it out. I don't need to hear it out. It's op deny, where they have a strategy where they're going to deny Trump 270. They're going to deny Hillary 270. And my thing is, I don't want to get into all of that. Let's just vote our, our, our hearts. Let's just vote with the candidate that has the best possesses, you know, our, our best ethics or our best beliefs. Do you agree with yeah. that? Yeah, I, I, totally. And now all these sort of uh, formulas I'm, I'm hearing people coming up with, how they're going to prevent this uh, 270 and all of this, it, it's almost, it's sort of, um, it's not going to happen, one. And secondly, like you said, vote your beliefs. Vote what you believe should be uh, where you stand politically. You know, understand that we have to build the uh, real power or we're going to be in, in complicit with these two major parties who don't have the, the best interest of the majority of the people at heart, you know? So I'm not concerned about all these, these complicated formulas. Participate, vote, you know, and, and let the chips fall where they may. And the thing is, if all you're going to do is vote, and that's the extent of your, your participation, I guess that's all right for some people. But for most people, if you're really concerned about what's happening here in this country, you've got to stay active, you've got to stay informed. Right. Right. So right. And if you yeah. inform them, basically, you will understand. Oh, lost him again. He'll be back, though. I got faith. I have faith. It's, but I agree. Look, guys, look, this is what I've been saying. And um, I think that I understand people just wanting to prevent uh, Hillary from taking the White House. But, you're, but the end game would be turning it over to Congress. The and then Congress is not going to choose, you know, uh, people who aren't who don't have corporate interests. They're going to go with the corporate interests. So at the end of the day, it's a bad move altogether. Ajamu's back now. Ajamu, I have uh, this is something I've been thinking about, and, and 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 please, if I'm wrong, you can clear it up for me. As I look at the right and the left nowadays, I'm beginning to believe we no longer have two parties in this two-party system that we have. It's really a one-party system. And the Green Party is the only left that is left. What do you think? Uh, I think, Tim, you are spot on. That basically at this point, with the reconsolidation or realignment taking place, what then the, uh, as, as right-wing forces are moving to the Democrat Party, you know, the only real progressive uh, uh, slash radical alternative has to is, is the green party you know and so and we're trying to it, it explain the folks who are progressives that that now with the new forces going into the democratic party the hillary clintons of the world need the the so-called progressives even less mm -hmm. so you're going to you know you have surrendered your principles by voting for her and now you have become a, a insignificant political force within this democrat party you know, so I think, but Tim, check this out. Being out here on this campaign trail, I'm telling you, there's something happening here in this country that we have locked, have, have kind of uh, plugged into over the last week and a half or so. I think coming out of the second debate, people were really shaken by some of the uh, rhetoric coming from the Clinton campaign. So beyond, besides all the adolescent bickering and stuff, people were listening very closely. And when they saw the kind of dangerous uh, and reckless position she has on issues of war and peace, I think people, people were shaken. And we have picked up a, uh, a sort of a, a second momentum, people moving to, to the Green Party just in the last week or so. You know, that's been very, very significant. And the thing about it, the polls are not picking this up. But there is, there is this, this, we feel it and we can see it in the, the turnouts and, the, and then the, the questions, you know, um, that people are understanding the point you just made, that, the only, if, that there's, there's no oppositional party right now. And if you are opposed to war and continued militarism, that the only place you can go, the only space you have right now is, in fact, the Green Party. I love it. I love it. Give it a clap for that. I love it. I think that whole Syria no-fly zone 
is the part that has people truly waking up that we have a warmonger and we have a, a buffoon. I don't, I don't, you know, in Donald Trump. You, you and, have, you, it's very dangerous. It's, it's the Syrian no fly zone, which has the possibility of a direct confrontation with, with, with Russia. Uh, it is supporting the rotation of NATO troops on the Western frontier of, of Russia. Uh, it is the commitment to uh, upgrade the, the U.S. nuclear arsenal to the tune of, of a trillion dollars. Uh, it is the, the, the continued commitment to regime change there in Syria. I mean, and it's the proven track record of aggression in places like Libya, uh, support for the coup in Honduras, of uh, the criminal activity in Haiti. You know, uh, the, this, this, we, we know what we have with, with Clinton. And what we have with Clinton is a commitment to the transnational elite's agenda, uh, and a real commitment to militarism and using military force to advance that agenda versus uh, Donald Trump, you know, who doesn't have a real history and no real core beliefs, you know, and who it appears that most of the ruling elements in this country are opposed to. And they're not opposed to him because he's crude uh, and a racist and a xenophobe. They are uh, opposed for other reasons. People need to ask the question, why is that? Why are they lining up behind Hillary Clinton? And why are you on the same side of the, with those forces when you support Hillary Clinton? Great question. Great question. I, I, don't, you know, I don't have an answer for why they, why they oppose Trump, but uh, I guess just because he's, I, I don't know. I, I can't even answer well, it's that. Clear why they support, it's clear why they oppose Trump, because of course he has these, these, these dark forces and, and, and all of this. My question is, why are you all lining up? Yeah, why, why are we lining up behind Hillary Clinton? I think that uh, some people are doing it out of just force of nature, like force of habit. Like they're just, uh, they're just used to voting blue. You know, they just, they've been blo voting blue, so they just vote blue. It's almost automatic. And, and now I'm hoping this election, yeah, I was reading where and I don't, you know, I don't want to spend too much more time on them, um, on Hillary. I talk enough about Hillary. T tell me more about the green vote. Let's talk more about why people need to vote green. And 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 before we lose you all together, Jarmo. Look, we have the, the the Green Party in this campaign is the only alternative that we have for uh, uh, for for peace. It is the only uh, campaign that's really committed to transforming this economy. That if you are concerned about the power of, of the banks, we are the only ones that that are committed to breaking up the banks. We the only campaign that's really committed to providing universal health care for all. We the only campaign that's, that's providing this that wants to provide free uh, child care for these hardworking women.